Attitude very kindly gave me an icon award. I feel like the word icon is slight, particularly gay icon is really bandied about now. Gay icon is really just, you know, an out of work weather girl is a gay icon. Uh, so <laughs> Oh, uh, I, I don't know how much it means in 2024. Hi, I'm Graham Norton, and this is my cover shoot for Attitude magazine. On The Graham Norton Show, I enjoy most of the guests. Most of them are really nice, and most of them are fun. Tell you who stands out for me is Kelly Clarkson because you don't expect her to be as fun as she is, and she's hilarious. We're off to do the Valentine's Night. Yeah, how did that go? Oh my go? gosh, have you been? Have I've, you... I've, oh, I've been. Has okay. he been? <laughs> Has he been? <laughs> and I predicted years ago that she should be a TV presenter, and look at her now, uh, the queen of daytime in America. I never blame a guest if they're not good, because it's no one's job to be a chat show guest. Uh, but some of them, you know, it's a struggle. Someone like Robert De Niro, he's a very lovely, benign presence on the show, but you know, he's not chat show gold, let's say. We're not very good at getting exclusives on the show. I once, as a joke, asked Liam Neeson if he'd ever shat himself, and he did start to answer the question in the affirmative before realizing he, he didn't need to. Well, dead celebrities, um, I must say, I really wish I'd met Lucille Ball. Uh, I was, grew up a huge fan of hers. We used to see her show in Ireland. And she used to do a great thing at dinner parties, apparently. If you went to the toilet and you came back in, she'd go, well, there they are now. Tell them to their face. And, uh, you know, causes awkwardness. <laughs> I like it. In terms of living celebrities, we've really done very well. I used to say Julia Roberts, but we've just had her. So Brad Pitt is about it now. You know, we're scraping a very glamorous barrel. Miriam Margulies, when she's on the show, I think she looks wilder than she is. She's actually very canny and sort of self-produces. Uh, so going into it, we'll know that there's a kind of a wild story you want from her. But often during the show, she'll change her mind. She'll kind of go, oh, no, that's not the story I'm going to tell. And she'll drop a bombshell on us. When I was young I, and I met Laurence Olivier, wow. that was, uh, I, I used to collect autographs at the stage door. You know, and uh, he came out and I remember so distinctly that I started to cream in my knickers. I could, I could feel it. But it's always timed very well, and she allows the other guests to have their moment. She's, she's clever, is Miriam. Ooh, I mean, in terms of suits, back in the Channel 4 days, we used to wear really wild things. I have a suit that I actually dragged out for a drag race not too long ago uh, that's covered in babies. <laughs> I don't know how or why, but it's a shirt, <laughs> trousers, and jacket, uh, all with babies on it. This is the last time I was on the cover of Attitude magazine. <laughs> I haven't changed a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, it, it's nice to be back. It's nice to, you know, it's kind of nice to be alive, never mind on, a, on the cover of a magazine. So uh, it, it's lovely, it's an honor. I mean, Attitude very kindly gave me an Icon Award. I feel like the word icon is slight, particularly gay icon is really bandied about now. Gay icon is really just, you know, an out of work weather girl is a gay icon. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how much it means in 2024. I mean, I was there from the beginning with Attitude. I remember being really excited when it hit the shelves. I remember seeing Pedro Almodovar on the cover and it was really, clever that attitude kind of they weren't just going pop or sexy they were going into kind of niche gay cultural things they were kind of saying this is who we are this is our tribe come with us and uh it was i i, I do really remember it rupaul on drag race uk is a dream he is so professional he gets it done and i suppose but the other thing is, he's still interested. And that kind of amazes me because, you know, I do one series a year in the UK. He does, I don't know how many series around the world. 
and yet he's still totally focused, interested in the queens, has valid things to say. Um, so I suppose that would be the biggest lesson is, you know, stay interested, don't coast. River Medway, I must say, was one of my favorite drag queens. She was the one who did the, the statue. She just had a traffic cone on her head and did a lot of pointing. Uh, she really made me laugh. And uh, I'll always have a soft spot for Tia Coffee. She was very, very funny on the runway. I was gonna say it's stunning and you should have been in the top. It's a, <laughs> a sensational garment. And in fact, you want to wear it yourself because it's so well constructed. <laughs> <laughs> My earliest memory of Eurovision was Dana winning for Ireland, which kind of blew my little baby mind. Because, you know, that was Ireland didn't win things. Ireland didn't triumph on an international stage. So, uh, yeah, we were all so amazed uh, that Dana brought it home. Little did we know it would become a bit wearisome in Ireland winning Eurovision. My all-time favorite Eurovision act and sort of Eurovision moment would be when Conchita first won. Uh, I just love that whole night. You know, we all wanted her to win, but no one thought she would. And when she did, it was just kind of a, I don't know, just a celebration of humanity. I think being on TV and being out from the beginning, probably, I don't, I'm not sure what that did for people in terms of identifying with me. Probably horrified them. Thinking, oh no, I don't want to grow up to be him. But I think if it did any good, it might have helped start some conversations uh, with people watching with their parents or watching with friends or family that they were able to kind of go, okay, you're laughing at him, you're watching his show, so maybe I could tell you something. I suppose I'm, I'm sort of fortunate that I've been on telly for a long time. So in the beginning, you know, I was quite shocking and out there and we did crazy things with the internet and sex workers and stuff. And now I'm, you know, I am firmly established. I couldn't be any cozier if I tried. I suppose back then my identifying characteristic was gay. Now it's old. I suppose of the novels I've written, the third one, Homestretch, is kind of the most personal to me in that it you know, deals with growing up gay in Ireland and going away and coming back to a modern Ireland. So I suppose that's the one that touches me uh, the most. I mean, Homestretch isn't autobiographical in that it's not what I did or anything, but there are echoes of my life in it in that, you know, I did leave Ireland you know, back in the 80s, and I now go back a lot and enjoy a kind of a totally different country. Well, when they offered me Wheel of Fortune, I thought, why not? Because it's such a strong format. It's been going for over 40 years. So, you know, the wheel is not broken. <laughs> Let's not fix it. So uh, I thought it was a pretty safe bet. Before I hosted Wheel of Fortune, I thought I would be a good contestant because I love a word puzzle, wordle, every day. But actually, standing in front of that wheel, with the lights, with the audience, with the money amounts, with the loser turns, all the things to think about, I think a kind of snow blindness would hit me. So no, I would be very bad. Mm -hmm.